Good morning, friends of the channel. Hello there. So, the start of the academic year for our important tutorials. In September, as school resumes, the serious tutorials also start again, the ones you really need to remember, the ones you must follow and mark, I guarantee you. Why? It is important to understand that some months are more suitable for certain makeovers than others. For example, September and October are two wonderful months for painting tiles, doors, and kitchens. There isn't yet the humid air of November that might give you a bit more waiting time between coats. The first and second dry a bit faster. So, if you need to do important makeovers like kitchens, many doors, or bathroom and kitchen tiles, I highly recommend the perfect period of September and October. Now, come and see today's disaster. We have removed this very, very old kitchen, which was unrecoverable, and what is behind it is quite ugly. Look, there are some tiles that are completely ruined. These are even punctured. They have put dowels with screws all over the place. Look here too. Everything needs to be filled and fixed. Also here, there are dowels where the door frames and cabinets were hung, even in this part of the kitchen. Here the tile is chipped, broken. You can see a pipe sticking out and on this side too. They haven't spared us. There are dowels everywhere to remove. We need to fill the tiles before starting to paint and even before thinking about how to color them for sure, but we have come up with a little project that will make this corner more modern and contemporary because this is a house that will soon be inhabited by university students and therefore we are definitely going economical. That's why they didn't want to dismantle the tiles, but we are recovering them because when they are so ugly you think you spend more to paint rather than dismantle. No, you never spend more by painting. You spend more because dismantling involves removing them, taking them to the landfill, and thus the disposal fee, and then you have to buy and reinstall them, which is a very high cost. So, pliers, hard work before starting to wash with our bar. Let's get started. by unscrewing all the wall plugs from the walls and if I can, I also remove the plug caps that are stuck in the tiles. If they come off, I remove everything. If it doesn't come off, since I have to fill it anyway, I can leave it inside the tile, it doesn't cause me any problems. These absolutely need to be removed. These need to be unscrewed with a screwdriver. I continue with these. They are a bit rusty, so they are a bit more difficult to remove. We remove wall plugs and everything that is not right. First essential step for the tiles, our bar. Hot water in this bucket, baking soda and ammonia. Together they help to scrape off and clean. The baking soda provides a degreasing action. Repeat it several times on kitchen and bathroom tiles. Doing it once and rinsing isn't enough. You also absolutely need small brushes too. I add approximately four to five tablespoons of baking soda. And about a glass of ammonia. Here I have roughly two liters of hot water. One very important thing, when you have tile joints, you can't just clean them with a dish sponge. It's not enough. Because in the joints, which are porous, grease is going to penetrate, and over the years it has settled in, it's completely normal. We have equipped ourselves with small brushes, which are also slightly pointed, that work very well even in the tile joints. We definitely cannot expect the color to last on a tile that has joints dirty with grease. So, remember, hot water, baking soda, ammonia, and a dish sponge for the smooth part of the tile. Here, for example, there are also some old plaster stains. I remove everything. Then we also go down, 
where there is this part of silicone and glue. You can see that it will slowly come off. But the fundamental thing is to remember that you need to scrape everything off from the joints. We need to remove the grease that has built up over the years from the tile joints. This is absolutely essential, otherwise the paint won't grip. But it wouldn't stick. It wouldn't hold even if you had sanded the tiles and applied a primer underneath. Because even the primer won't hold if there's grease in the tile joints, okay? So, you can use the products you want, but remember, magic paint works 100%. It adheres well to the tiles, but only if you thoroughly clean and degrease everything, especially the tile joints. Now that everything is cleaned, we have rinsed thoroughly and we have also covered the floor to avoid making a mess. Even though we are usually very precise and the paint doesn't drip, we have already started thinking about how to organize the day to optimize time. Why? Because all these holes need to be filled with putty, you should only start painting once the putty is completely dry. Sometimes, for very large holes on tiles, it may be necessary to apply two coats of grout, so always take this into account when you start working on tiles. I got the Materic Cream and my Cenerento La Spatula. Emma will help me and I will slowly start filling all the holes. As you can see, when the hole is too big it does this, it comes out a little. It is completely normal, it happens with any filler. So I start, first of all, by filling all the small holes and doing the essential first coat. Afterwards, it will be necessary to clean the tile immediately to avoid having to sand it later, and then I will apply a second coat. So be careful, if your time is limited, take this possibility into account. It should not be underestimated. I carefully fill all the small holes and even the larger ones since these tiles have suffered some mistreatment over the years before cleaning and smoothing them. Once dry, I will apply a second coat. We immediately wipe with the sponge so that the first layer of materic cream stays inside, but when it dries, we will apply the second coat, the last one. This way, we have a clean tile and don't need to sand everything down. Before starting to apply the second coat of Materic Cream, I gently sand and you can see in some places the filler has slightly shrunk because the hole is very large, but they are dry. So I lightly sand, wipe with a cloth to remove the dust, and now I can apply a second coat of Materic Cream to completely fill the small hole. All this preparation work before painting the tiles has been completed. A piece of advice, don't try to do something like this in a single day. On the day you start doing all this work, focus on removing the nails, starting to degrease, washing well with our bar, rinsing very well, and maybe in the evening, start filling in the holes. Do not start painting on the same day you do all this work. Why? Because the grout might still be a little damp and you might also be tired, and when you start painting, you need to be fully awake, especially if you are working alone. Now a preface. You can use whatever you like for the tiles, but if you want advice on two things you absolutely must have that will solve many problems, listen to me. First, the pointed brush, a brush that works perfectly in the tile joints and helps us avoid effort and cover 100%, even the deepest tile joints. And then the new magic paint roller with the fleece, 
a roller with a four millimeters microfiber hair that we have specifically designed to leave no marks. Trust me, it's a revolution whether used vertically or horizontally, on tiles, on shinier surfaces, on doors, or on kitchen cabinets. If you want a perfect finish without marks, it's truly a game changer. Also, for people who have a heavy hand and tend to use the sponge roller, our old sponge roller, and press down if there are flaws, first of all, you always press down and make foam, and secondly, you try to spread it too much. This is the solution because it solves all these issues of poor application. Now I'll show you how it covers. Surely the first coat will be necessary now, and then a second coat in a few hours. Why? Because I have this little flower that is orange, almost red, which is slightly more difficult to cover, so one coat is not enough, obviously two coats are needed. I have already poured some Julia's grey in the tray, the colour we are using today. It is a very beautiful medium grey that works well in both country style and modern environments, it truly looks good everywhere. I have already poured a 500 millilitres can here and now I am dipping the pointed brush in it and then I do the tile joint. I start from here trying not to go too far because I still don't know if we will paint the outer part of these tiles. Let's see, I stop here, I do two tiles just to show you. I take my roller, load it well, unload it gently, so we don't press down. Always remember that you need to work with fairly full rollers, and now I gently caress the surface. You need to try to avoid leaving marks. So you don't need to press down, you should always be smooth and velvety. If you find it easier because your roller is full and you want to continue covering the tiles, look, cover them and the tile joint is practically perfect already. However, you can always go back on the tile joint. You have to insist, because it may seem perfect to you, but I assure you that there will be some imperfections and you can go over it again as quickly as possible. Because you must not let the brush stroke dry on this tile, it needs to be nice, smooth and velvety. C. The coverage is already amazing. Obviously, you need to improve your technique a bit, so you can also do the opposite of what I am doing. Let's repeat. Load the roller well, okay? Obviously, it shouldn't drip, so get the hang of it and drain it a bit more if it risks dripping. You can also make a slightly wider surface with a single coat. I also try to be quick because it is very hot. Now I have the first application. I try to insist well on the tile joints because I assure you that you will notice in the end if they haven't been done properly and we go over it again. This helps you achieve a truly perfect finish. Look here. Obviously, with the second coat, everything will be truly homogeneous and smooth, but the first one is an excellent base. So, equip yourselves with the right products, such as pure paint, a pointed brush, a roller, and a tray, and be sure to work like this. Emma, can you help me? Let's go. The first coat of paint on the tiles is almost dry, or rather, it is quite dry, but we want to leave it for some more time to settle and dry thoroughly. In the meantime, we will paint the walls. We are obviously using magic wall, always Julia's grey, because we want to create a modern cube in this part of the kitchen background. It's a bit narrow like this, in the sense that it was perhaps used in the 60s, 70s and 80s to create these niches where the kitchen was hidden. Nowadays, it is much more common to create open spaces where the kitchen is the main feature of the environment. However, it has been decided here to maintain this division, so we need to decorate it. How's it done? 
Make it special. We have placed some paper tape here which will create a clear line, and where the division of the kitchen ends, the grey part will start on the wall. So Emma will take care of the heights because she is much quicker than me and I will do the lower parts, the precision work. Obviously, tone on tone using Julia's grey, Emma uses the Molino brush, I use my Elizabeth to move forward smoothly. Let's go. Remember one fundamental thing. The wall is special compared to all other paints you can find on the market for several reasons. First of all, it is water repellent and washable. What does it mean? If you put it on your kitchen walls, you shouldn't have any problems with food splashes or anything else because you can just use a microfiber cloth with water and soap, then rinse it and it becomes perfectly clean. Once you get used to having magic wall in your home, it will be difficult to go back to old paints because it is so easy to maintain. Secondly, the coverage, as you can see, is spectacular. Look, I am now using the Elizabeth brush, which is the classic brush we always use for furniture, but it has a very soft bristle. I use this one because it is smaller, while Emma uses the Molino, which is slightly chunkier. The same brush that I use for the furniture, look at the coverage it provides on the wall. This is a very old wall and I absolutely do not want to achieve a perfect surface because it is impossible. Applying the colour using this textured brush stroke provides a lot of texture which in this case helps me, as well as providing a beautiful overall coverage. So here, Emma, we almost risk doing just one coat. Look at this beautiful textured coverage that provides a particular, beautiful and modern touch. So remember that you definitely save money and make little effort, but you must stir well both the small and the big can. It is important to mix the components well and it is essential to use it pure. Remember, if you add water, you must finish it and not do touch-ups because even that 5% of water changes the color tone. This happens with all shades and colors in the world, not just with magic paint or magic wall. So be sure to always remember that when working with magic wall, you must follow our guidelines because this way you save time and effort and you will definitely achieve a beautiful and professional result. Here I can see that it is already dry, because yes, it does dry very quickly. And once it is perfectly dry, it looks semi-satin. What does it mean? That remains shiny and lets you see all the peculiarities of the wall. If it is a very smooth, new, modern wall, you will see a perfect mirror. If it is an old wall, perhaps with some defects, it highlights them and takes advantage of this feature to create a textured base that is also very easy to maintain in the future. So, I highly recommend that if you decide to use Magic Wall, you fully embrace this experience because it is not an ordinary paint, it is a paint that truly needs to be appreciated even in its application. While Emma finishes applying the wall on the upper wall, I continue with the second coat of paint on the tiles. A piece of advice. I add a small drop of satin protective paint, which is the protective coating I will use to protect it, to make it not only more protected but also smoother during the application, because I use pure paint, and so by adding a small drop of protective paint, it glides better. Look, just a little, two tablespoons. I have obviously already stirred it before, and now I am mixing it with the paint. I mix it well, also using the roller to ensure that the components are completely blended. It will be really nice to see how it covers with the second coat, but also to see the strength and the grip it has on the tiles. It has an incredible durability, so if you paint the tiles, you don't need to worry about washing or the usual maintenance on the tiles. You don't need to have fear. The only thing you must not do is place the hot pan directly on the tile because the heat will burn the paint. I finish mixing it really, really well, and now I'll show you how beautiful today's application is. Look. Obviously, you see it a bit lighter because it is still wet. When it dries, it will be the same. 
And look at how it has perfectly covered the little designs on the tile that you saw this morning. It is completely different. Remember, when the roller has nothing left to give, meaning it is empty, you need to get more paint and continue. Do not press down because it is pointless. It only creates unsightly marks. Look at that perfection. The paint will now be self-leveling, so it will spread very evenly, be much smoother, and there will be no marks. This is an amazing roller because it doesn't leave any marks. In this case, for the second coat, I do not use the brush, simply because it is not needed, as the colour has perfectly covered the tile joints with just one coat. Then, we will use the brush to properly protect the tile joint with the protective paint. So, shortly, when we apply the protective paint after the tiles have completely dried, we will use the brush again. We have reached the protection step. So, to recap, after degreasing everything, filling and fixing, we applied two coats of paint. One pure, one with two tablespoons of protective paint inside, which helps smoothen the application with the roller and also helps to make it a bit more resistant. Let's prepare for the coats of protection. So, what I generally recommend for tiles is two coats, but it depends on the wear and tear you have. Maybe someone will tell me, Eliza, look at a wall where there's only a cupboard attached. There will never be food splashes. We won't be cooking or placing anything there. So it's a colored tile in the kitchen, but it doesn't have the wear and tear of a tile that gets washed daily. Or there is the tile behind which there is gas, or there is an induction hob or the sink. Those tiles are washed every time you cook. So it might be better to apply two coats of protection there. One coat might be enough. It's not necessary to apply two. There are some people who, for an excess of caution, apply three coats. So be careful, always remember that just like nail polish, you would never put five coats of polish on a nail, two of colour and three of protection. You understand that it would be this thick and it doesn't make sense. Applying too many coats leads to the opposite problem. In other words, the thicker the protection, the more it becomes rubbery and therefore not light, fine, thin and well resistant. So, be careful not to apply too many thick layers of protection on the tiles, but above all, do not apply too many layers hoping it will protect more. Two layers are more than enough, especially having applied the two layers as we did today. We use the same fantastic roller that we used for the paint also for the protective layer, and I wrap it in paper tape when it has already been used because this way, I make the hair nice and new again. Look how it becomes like a plush toy again, so it is perfect to be nice and soft even for the protective layer. Remember, the protective layer can be used in all its forms, whether glossy, satin, or matte, and the matte can be washed exactly like the other two with a soft microfiber cloth, a small bowl with water and soap. Rinse it as you rinse all other soaps. Always remember to rinse the soap. Do not use sprays without rinsing because they are harmful even to the stomach due to cross-contamination. And always remember one thing, there is no tile protected with a protective layer that cannot be washed. You simply should not scrub it. If you use an abrasive sponge to scrub, you will remove the flocking of the matte protective layer, but all protective layers can be washed, okay? Spread it out as I am about to do now, so. Emma, use a pointed brush to get into the tile joints, and I'll use the roller. I load it well, after having already diluted my satin protective paint by 20%, with water of course, all the magic paint products should be diluted exclusively with water. Let's start from the beginning. Here we go. You need to be velvety and light. Do not press it down. Why shouldn't you do it? Do not press down because otherwise you will leave marks and if you do not want marks, you need to go lightly. Emma, you can go over it after I have and then I'll go over it again to smooth it out. Look, Emma. Go over it like this, inside the tile joints, okay? Excellent, even on the underside. And I'll immediately follow with my roller since it's still very hot. 
to avoid marks. This is the method I use now to do all the tiles and to avoid marks. You don't paint the tiles every day, okay? So when you do it, take the right amount of time to do a good job. If there are cats around shedding fur, friendly little dogs wanting to stay on the tiles or children wanting to help with the colouring, consider carefully how to organise yourselves because tiles are done once and then not again for many years. I will continue. And you follow me. You can also go faster. I always go slowly when I show you because I want you to understand the technique and method well, and I don't want to make you anxious. But look, now I move forward in a map of the gaps, and then I can easily go back to where Emma has already passed. This way, we work faster because, obviously, we have deadlines to meet. And voila, this way we avoid having the brush leave its mark. We want to have a nice smooth surface without marks. Here we go. See? It's quicker if there are two people. This makeover is also finished. So, we were extremely quick, extremely careful, and we have already applied two coats of protective finish, but you shouldn't do that. It's always better to apply another coat of protective finish the next day, or even two days later. We will evaluate, come back tomorrow, and try to understand if everything is perfect or if it still needs some touch-ups or possibly a few coats of protective where the sink or the gas will be. So always remember, it is not essential to apply three coats. In fact, two well-applied coats with the right technique are more than enough. These style choices and combinations, the cut on this wall, and making this cube more contemporary along with the tiles were done because some young people will be living in this house. We were told that the kitchen is white, not glossy, a classic white kitchen with a white door. This is why the tiles are grey, because the kitchen will stand out even more and the overall look will be even more modern. You do whatever you like, but always remember, tiles are not something you do every day, so they need to match your taste, yes, but also based on the choices you have already made at home, such as the flooring and all the other furnishings you have. So, choose the colours and shades well. Here, in my opinion, the fundamental thing is to put a nice bright light that still gives the right emphasis to these walls, which are beautiful and shiny. Yes. Please make sure to carefully watch all the steps in this tutorial because they should not be skipped when painting tiles. You need to follow all the procedures properly. One last piece of advice, one last precaution, but one of the most important. In the areas where you are going to place the sink, the gas, or the countertop, it should be finished with a drop of silicone. Why? Because silicone should be applied over the paint to finish. Why am I telling you this? Because often when you paint tiles, whether in the bathroom or the kitchen, you hear that the silicone is paintable and you have this urge to colour it. Never. Silicone is a soft compound, so it should never be painted because it dissolves with washing. The paint comes off because silicone is elastic, so it doesn't stay. So, the silicone should be applied as a finishing touch, but only at the end, to seal everything. Also, in the bathroom fixtures, I thank you for watching this tutorial. Write to me in the comments if you liked it, if it is useful to you, and give us suggestions for the next things we can show you. But remember that in the tutorials, also divided by category, there are many examples of old tiles made in many ways, doors, kitchens, tables, and furniture. Go and see in our library because we really boast many, many tutorials. See you at the next makeover. Bye-bye.